So up to now in this series of videos, we've only accepted user input using a button control. The only way the user can talk to us is when they click the button control, okay? But in this video, we're gonna allow users to type values into a text box and then retrieve those values and use them within our applications. Uh, so to get started, let's create a new project. So I'm gonna go File, New Project, and I'm going to call this Accepting Input and click OK. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin down the toolbox because I'm gonna need it here for just a moment or two. First off, I'm gonna start off with a text box. Now remember, we said use the right tool for the job and to accept user input uh, when they wanna type something, when we need them to type something into our application, the text box is the right tool for the job. Next, we're gonna use a text box to display a message, we're gonna change it up just a little bit from whatever the user typed in. And then finally, we're gonna use a button control here to allow them to tell us to uh, that they're ready to submit their content. We're gonna do that. We're gonna call this my button. We'll remove the text from the text block and we're gonna call this my text block using camel case. And then for the text box control, we're gonna scroll down to its text property and remove that text, don't want that in there. And then we're going to rename that to my text box. Now I'm gonna double click the click me button and I'm gonna start writing code right here. So the, I'm gonna create a new variable, a string called new value. And then I'm gonna set new value equal to you typed and then I'm going to go to my text box dot text. So up to this point, we've been retrieving or setting the value of text in a text block in order to display things. But now we're accessing the proper, we're retrieving the property. Whatever the user typed in, we're able to access it through its text property. So we've seen how to set values in this example or in, in previous examples, now we're using it to get values as in that little line of code right there. Finally, what we wanna do is uh, go to my text block and do what we've done a number of times already and set that to new value. All right, so it's a very simple implementation. Let's go ahead and run the application. And here I'm gonna just Whenever I use my mouse cursor and click into the text box, uh, the input scope, the QWERTY keyboard in this case, pops open. And there are a number of different input scopes that are available for our applications, depending on the type of information that we're trying to collect from the user. Uh, and we're gonna talk about input scopes on day three. So just hang in there with me, we'll get to that in, in a little while. Uh, but now I can just start using the mouse uh, to simulate the action of a user using their thumbs to type in a message. And I'm gonna click the click me button, the input scope goes away, and now we can see the message you typed in, the word Bob. Let's take a moment and review the code that we wrote. Uh, probably the most interesting here is the fact that we were able to retrieve the value that the user typed in by accessing the text property of the text box control. Then we use the plus sign, which in this case is a string concatenation uh, operator. The plus sign serves double duty. It can also be used to add two numeric values together, the addition operator. Uh, but at any rate, then we're able to display the value. Now, I can already see some opportunities for improvement here. First of all, the user, once they start the application, uh, it's not obvious immediately what they should be doing. Should I put my finger in the text box or should I just start typing away? Or, or I mean, I can't, there's nothing there. Should I click the click me button first? Um, ideally, what would happen is, since this is the only action that they can take in the application, we would force them to type something in by immediately popping open the input scope. So we'll do that. Secondly, why should they have to click the click me button? As we type, can't we retrieve those values? Absolutely, so that's the second improvement. The third improvement we can make is to kind of tidy up the code just a little bit. So let's do a couple of things here. For the sake of demonstration, for the moment, I'm just gonna move this click me button way down to the bottom. 
and we'll come back to that in a little while. I don't want to delete it completely because I've got a plan uh, in just a few moments. Okay, but what I do want to do, first of all, is to uh, tidy up the code. Let's start there. So instead of these three lines of code, I'm going to select all three lines. And then I'm going to do this in just one line of code. So my text block dot text equals you typed plus my text box dot text. Okay, so I was able to eliminate the variable altogether in this situation. Again, I prefer less code. This would probably take up a tiny bit less memory, uh, so little that it's almost inconsequential. However, get into practice of being succinct in your commands that you write, okay? And this was an opportunity to do just that. Uh, let me comment out this line of code though because we're not going to use that click button anymore. We're going to do something different. As the user is typing, we're going to start modifying our text block at that moment. And so there is a uh, an event that we can that we can uh, listen for that every time the user clicks a key on the input scope, it will fire that event just like the button click except it'll be the text has changed event in our text box and then we can update the text block control based on that so what I'm going to do is select the uh, the text box and I'm going to go over to properties and I'm going to use this events tab that's next to the properties tab we've been ignoring up to this point so this will show me all of the events or all of the activities, all of the behaviors that we can listen for within our applications. As you can see, by default, the text change event is highlighted because it's the default event for this control. So I'm just going to double click in, the select, in this property name area, not the value, but the name itself. Double click in that blue area there, and it too will open up and create a stub for us to start writing code. We'll talk more about events uh, and event handlers and methods a little bit later, but that's another way, besides just double clicking on an item, go through the properties window in the event tab to find all of the possible events and then say, yes, I wanna write code that listens for this event like we just did, okay? And what we'll do is take this line of code and I'm gonna do a Hold down the control key and select C to copy that to my clipboard. And then I'm going to put my mouse cursor in between the curly braces. And I'm going to hold down the control character and hit V to paste that line of code in uh, to our application. Now, when I run the app, one of the two improvements have been made so far. I still have to you know, use my finger to touch inside of the text box to start typing. But now when I type, notice that the text block automatically updates. So that's an awesome improvement. Let's move on to the final improvement now. And what we want to do is when the application first starts up, we want to make sure to uh, pop open the keyboard, the input scope. So we're going to need to handle an event that occurs pretty high up the, in the chain of events, so to speak. Uh, in this case, whenever my application loads, I want to immediately pop open the input scope. So what can I do? I'm gonna use this little document outline icon in the lower left-hand corner of my XAML designer. And when I click that, it's gonna show me an outline of the entire uh, of all of the visual elements that are inside of my application. I'm going to select the topmost item called the phone application page. And when I do that, see how it's selected over here in the properties window? Again, another indicator that reminds me of what I currently have selected. Now I'm going to go over to the events tab again, and this time I'm going to double click the loaded. So what happens is once everything on the page loads, this loaded event will fire gives me an opportunity to initialize the application because all the controls have been loaded into place we're almost ready to display to the user now we can handle this event and write code in it and the code that I want to write is this my text box dot focus and what that'll do is it'll simulate the activity of me as a user putting my mouse and my my finger, my mouse cursor, <laughs> into the text box and, and pushing. So it'll bring up that input scope immediately as the application loads. Let's go ahead and run the application again. See how this impacts what we've done. Okay, 
didn't see the animation, but it does indeed work. Uh, I didn't have to touch inside of the text box to bring up the uh, to bring up the input scope. Okay, now I want to do take one last improvement here, and I want to show how to clear out all of the work that we've done. So I'm going to reuse that button control, and I'm going to change its content to say clear. Okay. So now when I double click this, uh, we've had all this commented out code. This time what I want to do is, um, so my text box dot text equals, and I'm going to set it equal to an empty string, my text block dot text equals, and I'll set that to an empty string. All right, so let's run the application again. And so I'll type some garbage in there and then click the clear button. And notice when I do that, I get most of my intended functionality. The text box and the text block are mostly cleared out, which is great. Uh, there's only one thing that I don't like about this, that the input scope went away. And why did that happen? Because the text box lost focus. It's no longer focused because I clicked on the clear button. So to remedy that, I'm going to programmatically reset the focus then to my text box. So just like we did previously, I'll call the focus method of the text box again. So when I run this yet one more time, and I type in some junk here, and then I hit clear, notice that the input scope does not disappear this time. Awesome. So in this video, we learned quite a bit, right? We learned how to use the text box control and how to retrieve its values. And then we saw just now how we could set the value as we cleared out the text box using that clear button and the code that we wrote for that. Um, and there's a larger issue here. We were able to both set the value of properties and retrieve or get the value of properties within our code, right? Uh, secondly, we learned a little bit about input scopes, and I promise that we're going to learn even more about those on day three, so let's table that discussion for right now. And then thirdly, we, thirdly, we learned about writing more concise code and eliminating unnecessary things like variables when we really don't need them to hold temporary values that we can just as easily avoid by being a little clever about how we write our code. Okay, So that's all there is for this lesson, uh, and uh, we'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.